Just a few years ago, Texas A&M basketball was one of the top up-and-coming programs in the nation, but as quickly as the Aggies rose, they have fallen off and are in rebuild mode right now. I'm a big college basketball fan, and Texas A&M was one of those teams that I really liked and rooted hard for at the time. So today, we're going to talk about when Texas A&M basketball was good, and why they have fallen off since, in that time where they were kind of the next big thing in college basketball. But first, college basketball videos typically don't do well on YouTube, so be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, share it with your friends, comment your thoughts, and suggest a future video topic. Now let's get started and talk about Texas A&M basketball. After Mark Turgeon left for Maryland in 2011, Billy Kennedy took over for the Aggies program, and he would need to rebuild and prove he was the man for the job. In 2011, they were led by Chris Middleton, and they'd end up going 14-18, and, and he would leave for the NBA. In 2012, he brought in a nine-man recruiting class, but only one guy would end up being a building block, as that was Alex Caruso. The Aggies would go 18-15 behind star guard Elston Turner, and Caruso would develop on the bench. In 2013, he brought in another building block in zero-star recruit Jamal Jones, and he would lead the team in scoring that year, and they would make the CBI Invitational Tournament after an 18-16 record. In 2014, they would take the next step as they'd go 21-12 and make the second round of the NIT, but they also landed big-time transfers in Jalen Jones and former five-star recruit Daniel House. 2015 was huge as Kennedy brought in the best recruiting class in school history with DJ Hogue, Tyler Davis, Elijah Thomas, Admon Gilder, and Kobe Eubanks. Elijah Thomas would eventually become a star at Clemson, but the other four guys would stick around, and all five were top 100 players, and it was the fourth best recruiting class in the country. There was a ton of hype around the program, and it was backed with some on-court success. House, Jones, and Davis were the big three, and Caruso was the lead at the point guard position. They beat Texas, Gonzaga, Kansas State, and Baylor in the non-conference slate, and were ranked number 20 in the country going into SEC conference play. They won their first eight games, and were as high as number five in the country, before they lost to Arkansas by three. They beat number 14 Iowa State in the SEC Big 12 Challenge, and then they lost four straight games. They beat Kentucky with a Tyler Davis buzzer beater on game day, before they finished with a 24-7 record. They lost in overtime to Kentucky in the SEC Championship game before they were selected as a three seed in the 2016 NCAA Tournament. They easily beat Green Bay in the first round, or they found themselves down against Northern Iowa. Statistically, the Aggies' miracle season was over, but then this happened. Somehow, they had won this game in overtime and lived for another day. This was one of my favorite games ever, and I still can't believe that moment happened. Sadly, they lost handily to Buddy Heald in Oklahoma in the Sweet 16, and the season was over. Robert Williams and J.J. Caldwell were the gems of the 2016 class, but many thought they would take a step back. Jalen Jones, Alex Crusoe, and Daniel House were gone, and Tyler Davis, D.J. Hoke, and Admon Gilder were expected to step up. Those three definitely did step up, and Robert Williams stepped up as a true freshman, but the Aggies took a step back. DJ Hogue got injured late, and the Aggies missed the NCAA tournament as they went 16 and 15. Kennedy brought in a good recruiting class that included TJ Starks, JJ Chandler, and Savion Flagg, plus Marquette transfer Dwayne Wilson for the 2017-18 season. Tyler Davis, Robert Williams, DJ Hogue, and Admon Gilda were back, and they were expected to be good as they started out ranked number 25 in the country. They destroyed number 11 West Virginia on the opening night and ended up going 11 and 1 in the non-conference season and were ranked number 8 going into conference play. Sadly, they lost six of their first eight SEC games, including a weird game where Tremont Waters hit a buzzer beater for LSU, and their promising season was going into the drain, but they did regroup. They won four straight games, including wins over number eight Auburn and Kentucky, before they got ranked again and then lost three straight. They won their last three SEC games before they lost to Alabama by way of a Colin Sexton buzzer beater, and they're going to be a bottom seed in the NCAA tournament. They won a close game over Providence in the first round, and then were matched up with the number two seed, North Carolina. They killed the Tar Heels in a shocker, and all of a sudden, maybe the Aggies were going to be this year's Cinderella team. Think again, because they got killed by Michigan in the Sweet 16, and the season was over, and that was only Kennedy's second NCAA tournament appearance. Going into the 2019 season, a and had lost a lot and were not expected to be that good. They ended up finishing 14-17, and, and Billy Kennedy was fired after the season. They hired Buzz Williams to be the next head coach of the Aggies, and he was an established head coach who did really well at Marquette, and most recently Virginia Tech before then. It was going to be a rebuilding year, and Josh Nebo, Savion Flagg, and Wendell Mitchell became the three main scorers for the team, 
but they stumbled to a 16 and 14 record and would have missed the NCAA tournament had it happened. The 2020 class included Jackson Robinson, Hassan Diara, Hayden Hefner, and LaDamian Bradford, and Juco transfer Quentin Jackson has looked really good so far in 2020. Sophomore Manuel Miller has taken a step up, and he was a former big time recruit coming out of high school. And upperclassman Savion Flagg will be the best player and the leader of this year's team. I'm not sure if they're going to make the NCAA tournament this year, but Buzz Williams is a great coach, and I think he will build the Aggies back into an SEC contender. But I'm not sure how they will do in 2021. Texas A&M basketball had a weird rise and fall, and I hope they're a perennial SEC contender under Buzz. I just wanted to talk about that time that Texas A&M was good, and talk about a brief rise and fall of the basketball program. I really love those good A&M teams, and that Northern Iowa game is one of my favorite tournament games ever. What do you guys think though? If you're a Texas A&M basketball fan, let me know down in the comment section. If you're a fan of another college basketball school, let me know what topic or team I should do next. And if you want to support more college basketball on YouTube and on this channel, be sure to give it a like so it'll do better. Subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other college basketball videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.